Hello everyone, my name is Sharon, also known as Sage Vera, and welcome back to my playthrough of I Was a Teenage Exocolonist, recorded live over on Twitch. Last time, with the changing of seasons, pollen filled the air, and a new problem reared its head. The Shimmer, an illness that unfortunately plagued much of our exocolony, including our father. On top of that, Tangent has reached out to us in need of our help. What could the fiercely independent Tange need from us? Your hollow palm pulses with a mes message from Tange. Hello, Sagevira. If you're not occupied, could I ask for your assistance in the lab? Thank you in advance. Tangent. Typical Tange, but her asking for help is something so rare that you can't help but head over right away. You find her hunched over a spectrometer, making notes on a hollow screen. Oh, you're here, she says, blinking rapidly. She looks like she's been awake for days, wrinkled, a little shiny, and with a wild-eyed look for someone who needs a cup of blep tea. How can I help? I'm researching the shimmer, the respiratory illness some people report during pollen, she says. I'm loath to admit it, but I need your assistance. She takes four vials with swabs inside and puts them into your hands. I need recent saliva samples from both you and your father, she says. There must be a reason why he's so susceptible to the shimmer and you're not. You share half of your genetic code with him. There must be some marker we can compare between the two samples. Then, she continues, pulling another vial from a rack of test tubes, administer this to your cells, wait three days, and take the samples again. The test should be able to determine if anything in your body chemistry has changed. Tange looks at you seriously, cutting through her bleary expression. There's something going on here, she whispers. Something really, really big. I've begun to realize this is about more than just curing a disease. She squeezes your hand so hard it almost hurts. Unlocking the secrets of the Shimmer, who it affects, and why. It could lead to a greater understanding of all life on Vertumna. And knowledge. Knowledge is more than power, Sage Vera. It's control. Tangent, are you okay? You seem... Unhinged. Tange blinks again. I'm perfectly fine, she says dismissively. This is the face of complete concentration and focus. I'm in the zone, Sage Vera. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you, Tange says. I've been researching so hard, I think my eyes are going to fall out of my head. And for what? Well, for the end of a debilitating disease is a pretty good reason, but Tange just shakes her head at herself before you can answer. We're at a disadvantage here, she mutters. We're fighting blind. We need to understand this planet if we're going to get it under our control. She's making me nervous. She's making me nervous, chat. Tangent, are you alright, buddy? Um, dad? I need you to swab your mouth for me, dad. Oh, I can't ask him to do it. Oh my goodness. So, like, how do I... So is this just gonna happen like automatically? I don't have to. I, I don't have to actively do it. It'll just happen, I guess, because I don't have. I don't have additional dialogue with our father. So that's what I'm guessing. So the question is, where do we want to rest? Do we want to rest here in the uh, in the living quarters, or do we want to rest on the on the walls? I think I'm gonna go go ahead and rest up here on the walls. So we're gonna go ahead and relax on the walls. We're just gonna chill. We're gonna relax. You run into Cal and Anemone on the hill behind the garrison at a small construction site. They seem to be throwing logs. Logs? They seem to be throwing logs. There are a bunch of them lying at the bottom of the hill. It's a caber toss! Anemone shouts to you, then grunts with the effort of lifting a six meter long mush tree pole. She throws it like a javelin down the hill and sprints after it. My best record! She shouts and t ties a piece of caution tape to the end of the pole. Your turn next, Cal says, pointing to a neatly stacked pile of construction poles next to you. From the looks of the nearby construction, they're probably destined to be a new lookout tower someday. Um, choose a thicker, a, a thicker, heavier pole. <laughs> Challenge mode. Wee oo, wee oo. Cal makes a noise like a siren. He shouts down to Anemone. Sage Fear is gonna throw a big one, so you better get out of the landing zone. The pole isn't actually that heavy, but its length makes it hard to balance. You struggle to get underneath it with your knees bent. This is going to be tough. Lift! Run! Throw! See, we need 59. So, 
I think drawing a card will be nice. Mm, okay, why don't we draw another card? There we go. Okay, this is good. This is good. So let's do this and this, and then we'll add plus two to this card. Excellent. So now we've got 23 from our first hand. Very good. Very good. And now we can do this. Okay, so I think if as long as I get lucky with my card draws on the next one, I should be all right. Yeah, okay, so I got a bunch of logic cards. This will be excellent. And then what does that give us? That gives us 28. 26. That's what we want. We get five kudos if the two total equals our goal. So yeah, I think that I think that's good because extra money is a good thing. We didn't do great. We got zero stars for our victory, but we still got some stats. We got plus one toughness and five kudos. That's not terrible, right? I really need to get better at these card things. The pole sails down the hill past all the other poles, coming to rest sticking out of the ground. Wow, you beat my best distance, Anemone says when she jogs back up. Players can't beat each other in Mushwood Toss, Cal corrects her. They can only beat their own high scores, but you get two. No, no, no. Three bonus points if it sticks out of the ground like that. You play for the rest of the afternoon, adding rules and variations as you go. You don't stop until the entire stack of poles are in a jumble at the bottom of the hill and decorated festively with caution tape. It's a wonder you got away with this. Honestly, I'm surprised that nobody stopped us. But that's fun. Uh, do we want to forget? Ooh, I think I might want to forget the giggling. I'm kind of like slowly eliminating the zeros out of my hand and I'm not really focused on social. So I think I might want to, yeah, I'll, for I'll forget the, 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 the level zero giggle card. But I will keep my tangents focus card because I think that that's uh, nice to say the least. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our stats. So our toughness and per our perception is off the charts. We have 76 perception, so that's pretty wild. Our toughness is 38, and then animals is actually our our third best sk uh, skill right now because we've been spending so much time outside of the walls. I probably should start studying some life sciences though, just to. Uh, just to help with that. So let's go ahead and start working on our biology. <laughs> biology skills, and we'll continue to get reasoning as we do that as well. You never got around to attending life sciences class before Hal died. It's a shame. He was so passionate about science, he probably would have a lot to say about life on Vertumna. He was the teacher back on the ship. Who could possibly replace him? You take your seat in the classroom. There's no teacher here yet. You and the other students wait, exchanging awkward glances as time passes. Eventually, Chief Engineer Instance breezes through the door. She's accompanied by Tanj, who takes a seat beside you, barely giving you a second look. Look who showed up, Instance snaps with a sinking feeling she knows she's talking about you. Sage Vera, can you even tell me what life sciences entails? Tanj looks at you out of the corner of her eye, trying not to smirk. <sighs> Oof. Also... I've, it just occurred to me, Instance is probably Tangent and Dice's mother, just based on the color coordination. <laughs> Tang looks at you out of the corner of her eye, trying not to smirk. Um, the study of life? Instance frowns. An empty cup, waiting to be filled with knowledge, she mutters. Tang stifles her giggle, but just barely. Tang stops you on the way to class. Sechvira. Were you headed to life sciences? Good. I could use your help with something, actually. I'm working with Chief Engineer Instance in the bio lab. If you give me a hand with it, I'm sure she'll give you credit for the class. Oh, so that's not your mom? Okay. Of course I'll help. Honestly, admits Tange, we just need somebody to label petri dishes and move them from the cooler to different machines. A hop I could do it. Instance, Instance is staring unfocused at her hollow eye as she processes the results of the scans. Tanj goes and stands beside her, pulling up the scan on her own hollow palm. They confer quietly while you wait. Sounds like they're studying with studying the shimmer, the mysterious illness some colonists get during pollen every year, including your dad. Instance looks up at you as if just noticing your existence. Ah, Sage Fira, she says. We've been studying samples of, from some of the colonists who get sick during pollen, including your dad. Some of the stuff in his lungs, it's some kind of fungus. We think shimmer is a form of reproduction, Tanj explains. It's like 
a fungus trying to turn us into more fungus like it. It's really neat, actually. <laughs> you sound like you like the fungus. Uh, yeah, neat. You spend the rest of the week helping them study the illness. Mostly, this involves following instructions as doing as Tanj loves to repeat. Jobs a hop eye could do. Nothing beats hands-on experience, though. This would be easier if we had an actual sim sim sample of the fungus, instance remarks. They're working with some biological samples. A fancy word for snot. But according to them, the fungus is all mixed in with human cells. Instance has to spend a lot of time in virtue space trying to dis disconnect the two in her models. Where could I find a sample? Our most useful reports have been from foragers returning from Valley of Vertigo, she tells you, where the pollen is thick all year. That might be a good place to start. All right. Good to know. Good thing that we are strong and brave and perceptive and we can go out into the world and explore or something. So we need a total of 18 and we get five kudos if our total equals the goal. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way for me to make it equal. Eh, it's fine. I'll just go for the super goal. I'm more concerned. I'm more concerned with the skill gains anyway. I'm not really concerned with getting more money, to be honest. I'm more concerned with uh, getting skill gains. So I think this should be fine. Yeah, look at that. We got three stars. So we got... We got four biologists go, one reasoning, some stress, and we still got kudos, actually. We still got kudos because we did well. So that actually worked out quite well for us. I can never ex remember if exact target includes super goals. It seems like it, but like, I don't know. It's fine. It worked out. So I do think that I'm going to keep studying. Keep studying the life sciences. This week in biology class, you're learning about predators and prey. Oh, this is good. We want to learn about animals. Chief Engineer Instance brings up a picture of a hop eye on the hollow projector and asks, What is this animal, and what does it do when it sees a predator? Tanja's hand shoots up. They hop away very quickly. That's why we call it a hop eye. Instance shakes her head. Tanj, you should know better than that. Many prey animals run away from predators. What do only hop eyes do? Um, Tanj blushes and looks down at her lap, mortified that she got a question wrong. Instant scans the class again. Anyone else? Sage Vera. They thump on the ground and warn others. You've seen hop eyes out in the wild, and you know they're very communal animals. One wouldn't run away without warning the others first. Then they all hop away very quickly. Did we, did we succeed that simply because we know about animals? Because if so... I feel like we're doing we're doing good. Maybe maybe this is the right way to go. Correct. Instance nods. Tanj gives you an appraising look. Maybe she didn't expect this from you. Let's go. So learning about the animals helped us out. I like that. I like that very much. Kitsune says, "I think it's because you've seen hop eyes in the wild." Not sure. I mean, that's what I would assume is the fact that I have experience out there. So it's like, hey, maybe it's a good thing that I'm deciding to do my studies after getting a little bit of life experience. You know. I'll take it. Honestly, I'll take it. Hey, we got super goal. I'll take the super goal. Let's go. All right. Biology, reasoning, stress, and money because of the super goal. Or best score, rather. So, I mean, I guess it's nice. We're still making money even though we're not doing the money activities. It's time for the third annual Vertumnalia Festival. You gather with your family in the colony square. Everyone takes a seat as Governor Uticott approaches the stage. God, I can't remember what voice I gave Governor Uticott. She folds her hands and serenely addresses the crowd. What a pleasure to address you all today as your governor, she says, looking as pleased as she ever does. In under three years, we've built a colony of which we can truly be proud. While we've suffered hardships and losses, we remain standing, as always, looking toward the future we are building together. Let us use this Midsummer Festival as a time to reflect on our many blessings, Eudicott continues. Fresh water, good food, healthy children, and a strong community. Eudicott bows her head. But first, let us remember Professor... I'm sorry. Professor Hal's full name is Halitosis. Did we know this? <laughs> Did, his name is I shouldn't laugh. He's dead. I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't I shouldn't laugh at the dead, but oh my gosh, his name was Halitosis. Oh, uh, <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> so Uticott bows her head. 
But first, let us remember Professor Halitosis, who guided our children and kept our engines running for so many years. <laughs> Chief Engineer Instance will be filling in with help from our ship's AI congruence until someone can take up the mantle that rested so easily on Hal's broad shoulders. We also recognize the passing of our dear friend, Sh Chief Surveyor Melatonin, known for his gentle nature and his curious spirit. Tonin joins his daughter Asperitame and his partner Lavandula in the world of our memories. In his place, we welcome our youngest council member ever, Utopia, representing Expeditions. Utica invites the rest of the council to stand and be recognized among the crowd, including your mother, who's, who huffs in annoyance. When the applause dies down and the council sits, Utopia remains standing. Actually, Auntie Utica, y'all mind if I just make a quick announcement? Utica nods and Utopia clears her throat. I just wanted to say thanks to y'all who are trusting me with this job, she says, her clear voice ringing over the crowd. A cheer rises from expeditions, and she motions for them to quiet down. Uncle Tonin's left some big shoes to fill, and, well, I'm gonna give it my best. We're fixing to get to the bottom of what we're calling the Shimmer. The sniffles po folks have been getting during pollen, Utopia continues. Until we do, please keep on wearing your masks when the pollen is thick, and let the doc know if you're under the weather. She bends down to hug the governor as she leaves the stage. Thank you, Utopia, Uticot says warmly. And thank you to the rest of the council for their service. Live music starts playing and Uticot smiles. And now it's time for games and feasting. The crowd disperses towards the feasting table, clearing the area of chairs so the children's competitions can be held. What do you want to do this year? So last year we were the bot triathlon champion. So we can choose to do that again and just continue to reign over the bot triathlon um we could do that we could try something else like the talent show or the science fair but i don't know i feel like i feel like it would be cool to keep to, to be the reigning bot triathlon champion don't you think i think it'd be like sage fear a champion of the bot wrestling or whatever it is like i think that'd be cool so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep doing the bot the bot wrestling stuff Calm just keeps adding complexity to his bot wrestling game. Last year was the hollow obstacle course, and this year there's an accuracy challenge. Sink three baskets and you can move on to the next stage, Calm says, unveiling something with a flourish. A vacuum bot with a basket tied to its head. It chirps as it stomps back and forth, and the crowd cheers. I'd also like to point out, for those who don't know, this character, his name is Calm, short for kombucha. Yes. <laughs> You're competing against Anemone and Cal. You notice they're not racing around together. Cal is playing with the vacuum bot and Anemone is standing next to her brother. You're up first. Ooh, okay, okay. Start the triathlon, let's go. All right, so we need 47. We get plus one to physical cards and we get five kudos if the total equals the goal. There we go, so we get 21 from our first hand. So we just need one more good hand to, uh, to help us out. So this will save for our third hand because this is a uh, plus three on the third stage. Of, of, of challenges so we're on stage two right now so i think what we'll do is we'll use these cards here yeah <laughs> there we go we got the super goal we're not matching so we're, we're not matching the goal the super goal is 24 if we take off this one we're still not matching what if we do this oh okay so that actually matches the goal but yeah let's do that let's do that because we still hit the super goal, and then we also will potentially get plus five kudos. Crossing our fingers. All right, yeah, we got plus five kudos for best score, exact score from the battle condition, and we got some toughness. I love it, I love it. And we got three stars from that, so we did good. You thought the accuracy portion would be harder. Those vacu bots can be fast when they're on a mission. This one seems to get bored waiting for you to complete the obstacle course. So by the time you line up to take your shots with the sports ball, it's stopped running around and has taken, has taken to carefully vacuuming the dirt under its feet. 
You easily sink your baskets and move on to the wrestling competition and win by a huge margin. Anemone pouts and stomps over to Calm, yelling that it wasn't fair that you got it easy. She refuses to speak to you until Calm sits you both down and makes you shake hands, pointing out that Anemone also got hit by five hollow obstacles and couldn't have won anyway. Anemone begrudgingly accepts your win. So we got gain status popular and gained memory bought Athlon champion. Let's go. After the festivities, you ha you take time off for a much needed, much relaxing break. Your dad sets up a slip and slide, a slip and slide through the colony square, and everyone takes turns sliding on their stomachs and spraying water at each other. It's a lot of fun. You can feel your worries floating away in the hot dust sun. Chat, talk to me. Do you do y'all like slip and sli slides? Did you did you play on slip and slides a lot as a kid? I have such good memories of playing on slip and slides when I was younger. Like, oh my gosh, so fun. Like all of those, like um. All of those, like, um, those, those, I don't know, yard toys where you would, like, put the hose in and, like, it, it would, um, you know, it would fill it up and, like, it would spray water everywhere, or, like, the little, little kiddie pools, but slip and slides in particular. Oh my gosh, I loved a good slip and slide. Good memories. Good memories of the slip and slides, though. I love that. I love that so very much. That being said, we are now entering mid dust. Um, and we are popular. So if I remember correctly, this gives us a bonus to earning kudos. So if we want to maximize the use of this buff, we want to try to do stuff that will earn us kudos. But we'll see. Oh, hey, Sage Vera, Mars says, breezing past you. I'm sorry, I can't talk now. I'm on my way to work in command. Oh, Mars. She stops when you don't sound amazed enough. You know, the supply depot, she clarified. It's the most important job in the whole colony. Anything that gets made here goes through me first. Mars's smug smile gets, somehow, even more smug. Plus, I get the first pick of all the best stuff. Could I work there with you? I mean, we're pals. We're friends. Hmm, well, Mars hems and haws. I suppose it is a lot of work to do alone, and I do like you. We should stick together. Whatever Mars does to pull Administrator Seek's strings works, because after an hour, because an hour later you get a message from them on your hollow palm. They're dubious that you'll be able to rise to the responsibilities of the role, but that's nothing new. Seek is dubious about everyone and everything, but they agree Mars would be even more efficient if she had someone else to keep an eye on her. Okay, so we unlocked something there. Work in the depot. Plus two organizing, plus two persuasion. Oh, with plus nine kudos. That's really, really good. I'm, you know, I tend to ignore Mars because she kind of annoys me a little bit, but I'm kind of glad I talked to her <laughs> for that reason alone. Um, Because... Our parents mentioned that there was another job available. I guess I kind of that kind of slipped past me when they mentioned it. Um Cuz yeah, they mentioned it on my birthday, which was like 6 months ago, and I just completely like didn't even I didn't even consider it. So, let's go ahead and work in the depot and hope for the best. I mean, plus 2 organization, plus 2 persuasion, and we're going to end up getting 9 we're going to end up getting 18 kudos cuz we have double. So, that's kind of nice. So, let's uh try this out. New job.